This is one of our sales seminars, our free sales seminars. I haven't done one for quite a while. I've come to the conclusion I've got a great face for radio, but not necessarily for television. Um, I'm not one of those young guys wearing the baseball cap backwards. I've been around for 40 years now. Someone said, oh yeah, but Lee, what have you learned since 1985, mate? I've learned that practicing every day, working with people in business, um, there's something to learn every day. Literally yesterday, I was working with a guy who's a fantastic, um, precious art jeweler, fantastic entrepreneur in the, the art and marketing space. We're talking about doing some fantastic work there. Only a couple of days before that, working with a young guy who is uh, a website business. And then beyond that, there was uh, a guy, uh, in fact, an international athlete that we're doing some work with. Some fantastic things going on, not not, not the least of which with the sales team that we're working with uh, in the city. Um, and they're doing great things in terms of our color zone system. But what I want to do today is to share with you um, slides I put together for a fantastic podcast I did with my old business uh, client, David Horlock, who was managing director of BSI, British Standards Institute, um, and we did some fantastic work from about 2017 to 2019, um, creating sales records. And I just want to share some of the slides because there's so much um, that I was reminded of that you could use if you're serious about taking your sales, taking your business to the next level. Now, hopefully you can see these slides. Here they are. Um, a program we did where we met every 90 days across Asia and put in place uh, a change management sales excellence leadership program. Just absolutely brilliant. Uh, we had what, India, Japan, Korea, uh, Thailand, uh, Taiwan, China, uh, 13 countries, Australia, New Zealand, and so cross countries, cross languages, uh, but what it showed was a systematic approach, a systematic approach to sales, business development, teamwork, collaboration and masterminding made an incredible difference. There it is there. Sales management, stock take, mastermind. So much great work we did. And it's all based around the color zone system, systematizing each phase of the sale. Everything that happens before you meet with a client, not only in terms of psychology, mindset, sales planning, sales forecasting, marketing, all of these things go in the yellow zone. But then when you've got the lead, what happens in that first five minutes of the meeting in terms of how you frame that meeting, how you build rapport, how you read the room, how you position the company, how you position yourself. There's a whole range of things that go on systematically and scientifically in that orange zone because you want to get that zone right so you can go deep, discover the need in the blue zone, go swimming in the blue zone um, to systematically discover need and help the client get clear on needs or help the prospect get clear on needs so that you can, when it goes to present solution, you actually are tailoring the solution to the needs of the client rather than just dumping a product on the client. And then how you go about closing this up. People say, Lee, we want to close more sales. Whenever we do online surveys saying, what are the areas you want to get better at? People say, I want to close more sales. I've got to close more sales. Well, it's what you do in the other four steps. What you do in the yellow zone, as my good mate Mel Emery, your marketing guru says, what you do with your marketing is 10 times more important than what you do in the sales process because you can set yourself up for success or failure with the marketing. In fact, there's a great marketing principle that says, what is it? Um, the more you market, the less you sell. The more you market, the less you sell. Uh, how you go about doing that? But, so I want to close more sales here, but you want to get better at these other zones first, particularly pre-meet, meet and greet, discover need, and then how you go about presenting solutions. In fact, we talk about you present a choice of yeses. You present Rolls-Royce, Lexus, Hyundai. So what are you talking about, Lee? These are all languages or pieces of language that we bring into organizations, bring into sales teams, so that process, so, well, you don't know enough about our industry. You know a lot about your industry. The question is, are you using the right process to actually 
deliver the results. And if you're not happy with your sales results, I can pretty tell you, you are not using the right process. Process is 80% of the result. Because you can have the content, but you can overload with content, use the wrong process. It's called syntax, you know, the dog bit Johnny, Johnny bit the dog. Same words, different order, completely different outcome. And then there's what happens once you've got the business, how you service the business in terms of customer experience, we call it the R factor, the relationship factor, and how you go about protecting that account, growing that account, and leveraging that account so that you get more repeat business and referrals. It's a process, it's a scientific process. And so we work we work with the BSI every 90 days with the sales managers and then literally on a monthly basis in between the workshops, coaching over Zoom and developing these skills. It's not about the price, it's all about value and return on investment. How you actually demonstrate and articulate value, how you demonstrate and articulate return on investment. It's a process, it's a system. And like any system, you have to do audits to check are people using the system. And a huge part of the process is getting people to take on, own the information and teach. This is called the learning pyramid that that, that person like I'm doing right now, lecturing is not the answer. It's getting people to own the information, own the system, own the language and incorporate it, as David says, institutionalize it. Here's the system, the overall system, What when we break it down into the zones, what happens is 10 Ps, 10 Ps in the yellow zone. There's five R's in the orange zone. There's five D's in the needs discovery blue zone, where you talk about a system called POMPIC. Then there's how we go about presenting the solution, how we pitch, how we plan, how we use process payoff, the process payoff, the problem process payoff system. And then the green zone, all of the c components of the, so this, you, you, you can run a one day workshop on this and introduce people to the system, but you actually want to go on a journey. It's a bit like saying, hey, there are 10 or 15 clubs in the golf bag. Um, yeah, I could introduce you to those, but to become a master at each of the clubs in the bag, Clearly, it's a journey you've got to go on. You commit to a 12-month, two-year, three-year journey, which again, you've got to listen to the podcast that David Horlock and I did last week, where David talks about the importance of institutionalizing this so that we have people using deliberate practice, so that there's a deliberate practice, there's a cadence of regular coaching, and how that all links in with the CRM how that links in with your sales scoreboard, how that links in with your sales results, how that also links in with your bonuses and sales incentive system, because you want to be rewarding the behavior you want repeated. What we've got here is a skills analysis system to go, you know, at what level of skill, how good are you at each of these areas? You might be great at rapport, but shocking at handling objections and closing. You might be great at rapport, but shocking at needs discovery and the POMVIC process, delving down. You might be great at rapport and great at presenting the solution, but if you can't actually close and actually ask for the business, then you are going to be costing yourself and the company money. So this is about a commitment to getting good at the business development process. And what we know, this is what happened at BSI, the chief exec, the MD needs to be leading this co-presenting with the facilitator. We talk about the power of the internal consultant and the power of the external consultant. And David was just a superstar at this with his passion and, and concretizing the, con the content, concretizing the process. Lee, you don't know what I'm off about. Somebody said to me the other day, um, we chose a consultant who knew more about our industry. Well, good, now you're getting information from inside the box. If you want to get a different result, you need information and skills from outside the box. We call it industrial myopia. Industrial my Let's all think like our competition, but still try and beat our competition. Doesn't work that way. You've got to come from outside the box. Outside the box. Industrial myopia. Go keep suffering from industrial myopia. These guys are superstars. The interesting thing is, even, what is it now? So that was, say, 2017, 2018. So let's say that's five, six years ago. 
well over half the people in this photograph do not work for this company any longer. They've moved on. So all of that, I can just see it's well over half, probably two thirds of them are not with that company any longer. They've moved on. So all of those skills have gone. They've walked out the door, they've gone to other companies, but there's no system to replace there's no system to replace, certainly nothing that compares with what we did because that's the feedback I've got, is that that all of that inf all of those skills have walked to other companies now. Well, I want to say, you know, two thirds at least. So the skill base has been diluted, which is why you must institutionalize the ongoing training skills and upskilling of the people in the team. It's like, it's like saying uh, our football team of five years ago um, we do a lot of training, but we've actually stopped kicking for goal practice now, and we've stopped hand passing practice, and we've stopped, uh, we've even stopped running around the oval um, because we did that training five years ago. What kind of insanity is that? No, as Zig Ziglar said, you know, training is like a shower. You've got to do it every day. The, the yogics talk about daily practice. We talk about don't sell one product, sell a choice of yeses. Talk about the three option, the bundling, the packaging of solutions. It works an absolute treat when you drill this in. Now, so what's well, a concept? Yeah, but now let's actually institutionalize it. Let's look at your proposals. Let's look at how you pitch and let's improve how you go about presenting and empowering the client to with a choice of yeses. Of course, you're the one choosing it. Is David again at the front of the room? talking about real life customers, real life campaigns, real life numbers. So it's concretizing the theory, concretizing the process. And that's a great example of one plus one is three, if not five. Internal consultant plus external consultant. Internal leader, external leader combined, thinking outside the box. And what do we do? Create consistent sales records. And this is India talking about their numbers, just some great, great examples again of people owning and buying in and reporting back sharing best practice here we go again david at the front of the room sharing best practice taking what i taught and then concretizing it doing the reps this is a great tool that we develop embedding excellence the capturing of best practice as david said collective brain power equals collective best practice capture the best practice and then turn it into a standard and then institutionalize it that's what we did, the living document. Involvement equals ownership equals commitment. And then taking the color zone and breaking it down even further into how we tailored it for this organization and beyond. The customer planning tool, the sales planning mocks that we did with the team, the management planning, the rapport and positioning, the E plus E, end in mind and expectations and permissions to ask questions and make notes. The Pomvic pad and how to use the Pomvic pad and the pain points and then also fleshing out metrics and turning that to value. The management debrief after the needs discovery to go, what did we do well in that meeting? What could we do different? The ballparking, did we, did we, did we ballpark and did we get them to articulate value, importance and commitment before we then went to red zone proposal because we said the rule was we created you do not do a proposal or a quote without a Pomvic pad. And you do not do a proposal or a quote without a choice of yeses. And you, then we talk about the three big yeses, how you actually summarize, how you actually strategically question to get the three big yeses upon which you then sell on value, do the price sandwich, do the reduction to the ridiculous, close in the yellow. These are gr in the green zone. These are skills that you can learn, that we can teach you. When you build these in, drill, 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 then get better at them, Kaizen. And then there's a the management debrief. Okay, how did you go in that closing meeting? What worked, what didn't work? So we start to do project close out, management debriefs. So we're learning, sharing, collecting best practice. And then we move into purple zone, key account management, how we actually go about managing, protecting that account, growing that account, and getting repeat business and referrals. We say 80% of your business should be coming from repeat business or referrals. And then after all of that, the ongoing sharing of the lessons. 
so that we're regularly sharing intelligence, sharing lessons, so that we're talking about continuous improvement, continuous learning, and all of that is logged in the CRM. So we have a database building in the CRM rather than a whole pile of spreadsheets or ideas um, that are in sales managers or business development managers' heads. We can use it in terms of collective brain power. Uh, we use fantastic what we call heat maps, which is brilliant in terms of measuring progress, plus the report backs, which were just powerful tools. We also did a train the trainer so that we helped with the embedding there. But as the famous Aristotle quote goes, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So we embed it, train the trainer, spread the skills around. Did it work? Oh, well, here we go. Here are the stats. 176% of budget, thank you. This was done. We are 40% up on last year, 176% of budget target, thanks to the training, coaching, and sales excellence with Lee Funnell. Plus, we've won. We've won LearnX Awards with this training. In other words, we didn't fall out of the trees yesterday. This is a systematic approach. It's not just some person who's been good at sales getting up and saying, This is what I do, you can do it as well. It's deconstructed, it's systematic so that it's teachable and learnable, which is in fact exactly what Michael Lamb said there. We grew by 46% last year in China, that was, that was BSI China. We can now decode the success of our best performing salespeople. That's tremendous. It's a brilliant program, combination of theory and practice. Last year we grew by 46%, and this year we will grow by 40%. Thank you. It works, it works. People are happy, in fact, they're looking back now saying, we. We miss this fun that we had, how you combine fun, laughter, interactive engagement with empowering and enabling salespeople. Um, Tony Wu from Malaysia, 40 to 50% difference in my team thinking. We can feel the energy difference in the team. We're committed to change. We've set a stretch target. The team are committed to achieving more than 40% target. We will definitely go mad for more, go mad for more. That was the key theme. Thank you, Lee Funnell. Folks, it's a brilliant program and I highly commend it to you. We then did a similar program in Europe. That's uh, the team that we did with the food, global food team in Nice. Um, and here's some more examples of some of the tools and artifacts we created to support the teaching and the expansion and the people owning and becoming teachers of the material. Iceberg of ignorance. Problems known to executives, 4%. Problems known to team managers, known to team leaders, known to staff. How we get that up the ladder, which again is what we did in these. We created more and more openings so people could learn and solve problems, be empowered, go mad for more. There it is. We're using some of the desktop flip charts, which are reinforcing ways to remind. And again, we've got them practicing using those to teach others and bring that conversation into their their everyday workplace um, so there it is the color zone teaching it embedding it practicing it deconstructing it there's the use of the pompic pad and re role playing and practicing using that tool that artifact and this wonderful flip chart on how we learn the four stages of learning unconscious incompetence we don't even know you can't do something don't even know I couldn't develop rapport. Don't even know I couldn't even do the price sandwich. Didn't even know I couldn't um, intelligently ask strategic questions in needs discoveries. Try it, then I'm conscious that I can't do it as well as I thought. But then when I start doing the reps, when I start doing the practice, I get better and better and better. And if I do daily practice with daily coaching, weekly practice with weekly coaching, I get better and better and better. I become consciously competent to the point where I'm getting better at it and I don't even know that I'm getting better because I'm unconsciously competent and I'm becoming a master. We say do the reps, do the reps, do the reps, do the reps so that you can get better and better. That's what we're doing. That's what we teach. That's the way we do it. You can do it as well. And stretching the comfort zone, having fun, stretching the comfort zone and putting in place systematic action plans to do deliberate practice as a structure and a system that you can get access to. And uh, we have a lot of fun to do it. But just fantastic, beautiful people. Um, again, I'd say well over half that team are not with that company any longer. And therefore those skills have walked out the door, which means it's so important to systematically, year on year, institutionalize this 
rethinking these behaviors. I want to find out more, do touch base with me. Um, LeeFarnell.com, uh, it's all there for you on the website. I'll put it in the link. Um, not interested in business development, don't bother calling me. But if you are interested in business development, are interested in taking revenue to the next level, um, if you're frustrated with your revenue right now, if you're frustrated with your team performance, then we're the people to call. LeeFarnell.com. Um, I'll talk to you about performance development consultants another day, which is a, a large community, not just sales and business development, but strategic planning, accountants, artificial intelligence, uh, marketing, uh, web sites with 60 different consultants there that we can help you with there, including government, non-government, not-for-profit, and sport. Anything you do with performance improvement, you call performance development. But what we've been talking about today is business development, a systematic approach, proven, scientific, cut the bullshit to get sales and your sales team empowered, happier, less stressed, and way more productive. I love creating high-performing, record-breaking teams. If that's something you're interested in, then touch base, let's have a 15-minute chat, or say, Lee, send me some of your information, or go and check out my podcast, because there's a whole lot of free information there in the podcast, everything from sales systems to repeat business referrals to uh, doing proposals and quotes. I, I really just love sharing information to help people. Want to find out more? Do touch base. Thanks for watching. I'm Lee Farnell. I'll see you next time. Thank you.